there, welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and today is Tuesday, so that means it is time for Get Ready With Murder. I am going to tell you a true crime story that takes place in Northern California while I put my makeup on for the day. <laughs> so if you wanna hear the story of Lindsay Cutshall and Jason Allen in the Jenner Beach murders, please make sure to stay tuned. I am getting started today for the third and final time with the Revlon Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. Today I am trying it with a beauty sponge and the foundation. If it doesn't work for me today, we're gonna call it a miss. Let's get into it. Today we are going to talk about the Jenner Beach murders. This is a um, story that I had never heard until I started researching for this week's um, episode. It's really kind of interesting and has some twists and turns and it's just gripping because I think it's so sad. 22 year old Lindsay Cutshall and her boyfriend fiance Jason Allen. These are the two players in our story. Um, Lindsay was born in a small town in Ohio. Um, her father, she's deeply religious, her father was the uh, pastor at her church. Um, they, you know, they lived in the heart of Amish country, so they. Um, Why am I using that end of my sponge? What a weirdo. No wonder this isn't working very well. Um, so they lived in the heart of Amish country and it was a small town. I think only like 4,000 people lived in her town and her father was, you know, the local pastor. So she was very involved in her church and very strong in her faith. Um, so when she left her small town to go to college, she went to a Bible college where she met Jason. Um, so Jason Allen is his name. Um, at the time of their disappearance, he was 26 years old? Yes, 26. And um, so they met at Bible College and he came from a small town, a small-ish town. It was bigger than um, Lindsay's town, but still a small town in... Mississippi? And I think Mississippi or Missouri, shoot. It's one of the M states, not Montana. Oh. I thought I had remembered everything. Um, well, anyway, so he was from a smallish town. He was raised Baptist, also very strong in his faith. So when he met Lindsay at college, they were kind of a perfect match. They both wanted to um, spend their lives like ministering and ministering to children. Um, this is light, but the sponge is the key. And they actually ended up getting engaged. They knew they wanted to be together. They wanted to like be, you know, ministers to children. So their summer jobs actually from college was they worked together at a um, Christian summer camp for kids in El Dorado, California. And they were like the best counselors. The kids all loved them. They loved their jobs. They spent the entire summers out there. Um, and this summer that they disappeared, they had just gotten engaged so they were starting to get you know things ready for their wedding sending out invitations um, planning you know all the fun stuff that happens when you're young and in love and planning your wedding and one weekend they took a trip together just the two of them away because they didn't you know live in California they were just there for the summer so they decided to take a little weekend trip together with the two of them do some camping and go see some sites um, and then on Monday they didn't show up for their job and so the head of the camp got worried and reported them missing. But because they took just a little spur of the moment weekend trip, um, nobody knew where they were. Um, they knew they were likely still in California, but nobody could find out where they were. So her parents started to do an investigation, the police did an investigation, and actually one of Lindsay's friends from back home worked at the bank where she had her debit card and offered to help. And so using the debit card, they were able to track them to um, just her purchases. They were able to track them to a little um, area you know, outside of Jenner, California. So they figured they were at the beach called Fishhead Beach. Um, and this was because they had on her credit card, she bought just like a mini bottle of Tabasco sauce. So they were gonna be, you know, cooking out on the beach um, and having Tabasco. So Lindsay and Jason, they get to the beach and apparently it's a gorgeous beach. It's like super scenic, beautiful sunsets. Um, so, and there's a little like hut on the beach that's got a little um, like book inside that you can sign. So they both signed it and I'm gonna read to you word for word what they wrote because I thought they were really nice. This is what Lindsay wrote. Um, she wrote, the sun is going down in the horizon. All I see is beams shining off the cliff face and I know that God is awesome. I look around and I see his creation all around me. 
this nice. And Jason, I like his because you'll find out. Um, his says, as I stir this mac and cheese, I think to myself, what a wonderful life. I've just spent two awesome days with my fiance, Lindsay. Can life ever be so perfect? Only with a person who is so great. God gives me this privilege in life and he has given me a wonderful woman to enjoy it. So they were having such a nice time and just they you could tell they just loved each other so much and they were just having a wonderful time at life so that night they you know we're gonna sleep on the beach and have a cookout and just really enjoy nature and enjoy themselves and then you know head back to work in El Dorado on Monday so they were on the beach they were enjoying themselves um, went to sleep that night um, in separate sleeping bags and they did not wake up from that sleep their bodies were found like three or four days later during a search of the area because after they found their credit card receipts it shows that they were right there the police um, were doing helicopter and aerial searches and they were found there I think it was three or four days later I can't remember precisely so they were found in their two separate sleeping bags they had both been shot in the head um, with a 45 caliber Marlin rifle I'm not sure what that is but I guess it's very specific so the um, ammunition that goes in it is very specific as well um, they were found with basically all of their stuff no not basically actually all of their stuff nothing was taken um, their Bible was on the beach nearby so they you know clearly done some study and prayed before they went to bed all of their possessions were still with them um, including a diamond necklace that Lindsay was wearing all of their cooking stuff um, their car was still there their you know wallets and money was there even their camera was there um, so it was kind of really confusing to the police because why would they just randomly be killed by somebody who wasn't there to you know rob them so um, and they actually found they got their film on their camera developed and they found a really like nice photo of the two of them at the Golden Gate Bridge that oops that their parents you know got to have and keep as kind of a last memory of them but so it was really confusing to police officers because they had really no evidence um, besides because nothing was taken there wasn't any physical evidence left and with it being outside it's difficult to um, <laughs> what am I trying to say it's difficult to um, you know gather any like real physical evidence without knowing who or what you're looking for so um, all they really had to go on was this like the bullets and the um, knowledge of what type of gun it was that killed these two and by bullets I mean bullet holes the um, person who shot them actually took the casings with them uh, so clearly they knew what they were doing so with like no evidence this case goes cold pretty quickly they did look at one local person who was um, considered a drifter um, but he was pretty quickly dismissed um, he passed a lie detector test um, had appropriate alibis all of that stuff so he was not considered to be a suspect after that and um, did I tell you what year this was it was 2004 um, so until 2017 the case is cold and in 2017 the police in the area release a statement that they have a new suspect whose name is Seamus Gallen. I wanted to call him Sean. Seamus Gallen. Um, he actually, at the time that he became a suspect, was in prison um, and police custody for the murder of his own brother. So he became a, a suspect in this case because he used the same type of gun to kill his brother and he also revealed some details of this case that have never been made public so nobody would know except somebody who was either there um, or had intimate knowledge of what had happened and it turns out he's got quite the history of random um, violent acts two months before he tr he killed Lindsay and Jason he tried to kill somebody else in Monte Rio California I don't know where that is um, but what he did was he planted a package bomb on the hood of a woman's Honda and waited by and watched until she was close enough or well his plan was that he was gonna wait by and watch until she was close enough to get to it and open it and then he would detonate a bomb and she would die 
he actually did time in prison for shooting someone with a bow and arrow and in that attempted murder case um, so he's got a history of just random for no reason violent acts and um, so he's you know been arrested and charged with the murders of Lindsay and Jason but he's being housed in a uh, mental care facility because he is stating or they're taking the sorry it's hard for me to do my brows and talk um, but he is going the route that he is not mentally sound um, and that's why this is all happening so Gallon has been officially charged as of May of last year, so 2018. Um, he's, like I said, housed in a mental health facility, but he's 39 now. So that means at the time of the murders, he was about 24, 25. And he was, apparently he's still got a public Facebook page. I have not looked at it, but he was a big fan of creating his own weapons. and um, just random, random weird things. So he is awaiting trial and the, you know, justice system feels that they have, they're confident and that they have the Jenner Beach killer and he will be brought to appropriate justice. Um, the parents of the two are just like, I've read some articles and um, interviews with them and they're just like the loveliest people. Their parents are just like, you know, we were so sad and so devastated, but we at least, you know, have the uh, privilege of knowing that, you know, where our children are. There are so many people, um, Jason's mother had said that there are so many people whose kids, you know, and family goes missing, but they have no idea where they are and they're never found. And so that they have that for the rest of their lives, that they're just, you know, waiting and wondering because she said that if I didn't know for sure and I had any hope that he was still alive, I would still be clinging to that hope. And that that would be, you know, kind of basically torture for somebody going through the same thing that she did. So so of course they're very religious and they all know, you know, in their hearts that they will be seeing their family again and that they are glad that they were at least given the opportunity to know for sure um, what happened to their children. And I think that's kind of a, a nice, a nice way to think about it. And Lindsay's dad actually still um, preaches and he uses her Bible in sermons. I'm not sure if he still does anymore. Um, the article I read with him said that it had been, you know, well worn and well used over the years. So I thought that was like a nice tribute that he could do for her. Ooh, this is weird. All right, you guys. So that is the story of Lindsay Cutchell and Jason Allen, the Jenner Beach murders. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. A new Get Ready With Murder comes out every single Tuesday. All right, have a super great rest of your day and we'll talk to you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.